When you work in a small shop, it can be easy to overlook dust collection, but working in a small space also means that the air gets filled with dust pretty fast. When I first started woodworking, all I had was a shop vac, and today I have multiple different dust collection options. I didn't add them overnight, I added them progressively as I went, and today I want to walk you through each of those options. In the second half of the video, I'm going to be updating my dust collection system with some automated switches, so stay tuned for that. Now, when I first started, my first tools, none of them had dust ports, so I couldn't even use a dust collector if I wanted to. All I had was my trusty little shop vac that I still use to this day, and it was great when I could connect it to small tools and the ports, but other than that, I just used it to clean up the mess once I was done using my tools. Now, having a shop vac at least is the bare minimum, but you need to know that a shop vac mostly spits out the dust into the air. It may be filtering some of the big chunks and taking out of some of those larger particles, but it's spitting out the fine dust, which is the most hazardous. As you probably have heard, woodworking dust can cause asthma, allergies, sinus problems, and even lung cancer. So at a minimum, what I recommend, and what I have here is to have a respirator. And this is a respirator that has P100 filters. It should be a tight fit on your face. Um, there are different sizes. So at a minimum, I would recommend to use this if you don't have any dust collection in your shop. And even if you do, I still wear this. Now, what I will point out is that for some shop vacs, not this one, but if you have a more recent one or a more advanced one, you can actually swap out the filters for a HEPA filter, which will help reduce the spitting out of fine dust dramatically. All right, so the second piece of equipment I added to my shop for dust collection is this overhead air filtration unit. And I run this whenever I'm making dust and it's also great because it has a remote. So whenever I leave the shop, I can put a timer on it and just have it clean the air while I'm gone. Now this particular model has two filters, five microns and the other one is one micron. And anytime I'm looking for dust collection, I hope to have at least one micron or less than that, ideally, to filter out those fine particles. So what I like about this air filtration system, other than keeping my lungs clean, is that it helps to keep surfaces a little cleaner. Now, if you think my shop is clean because of this, no, it's not because of that. It's because I clean my shop, but this does help keep tables and surfaces a little cleaner. So this unit has two filters, an outer and an inner. Just remember to have extras on hand and change them regularly and clean them out to keep it running smoothly. Now, if you're one of those people who doesn't wear a mask in the shop or needs a reminder for when to put on the mask, this is a great tool to have in your shop. It's an air quality monitor or dust particle monitor, and it measures large and fine particles, but the numbers really aren't important. What's important is that you'll have a baseline reading when you turn it on with clean air in your shop. And when those numbers start to creep up, you know it's time to turn on your air filtration and put on your dust mask. Now this model is probably the best value for money there is today. Um, a lot of woodworkers use it like the Wood Whisperer, Jay Bates or Matthias Wandel. And having tried a few of them that really didn't work, I can tell you this one is probably the best you'll find in this price range. And I'll leave a link to this air quality monitor and all the tools I talk about in this video down below. Now, personally, I never thought I needed a dust collector and had no intention of adding a dust collector to my small shop until I upgraded some of my tools like my table saw and my planer. You see, these tools actually require dust collection to run efficiently and a shock vac just won't cut it. In fact, most of these tools will list the minimum CFM requirements in the manual or you can probably find it online. Now for this table saw, the minimum CFM requirement is 350 and a planer is around 400. Whereas the most efficient shop vac at 6.5 peak amps or whatever, probably has a CFM of only around 180. So just not powerful enough to suck out those wood chips. That's where the dust collector comes in. All right, so here's my dust collector tucked into this little corner here next to my table saw. And I got it a couple years ago, about the same time I got the saw. And I went through a bunch of different, you know, decision criteria. And I want to walk through those. So if you need to buy a dust collector, maybe it'll help you along. So number one consideration for me, at least, was the CFM. A lot of the smaller, cheaper ones that you'll see on the market, sorry, not cheaper, less expensive ones, will probably start around five, 600 CFM. And you might think that's great since the tools only require 350, 400, 500 CFM, that's great. But the truth is the further you get away from the tool, if you're using a flex hose, if you have a kink, 
all sorts of factors will affect the suction. So you'll probably want to go for a minimum, I'm going to say 900, 1000 if you can. I went with a 1200 CFM model and it's been working fantastic for all the tools I have in my shop. So I would recommend at least going up to the next level a little higher than that 600 minimum. All right, the next thing you'll probably notice or probably noticed already is this canister filter on top. I went with the canister instead of the bag for a couple different reasons, and this was really important to me. Number one, this is a one micron filter. Once again, you can get bags that are one micron filters as well. But what I find is two things. Number one, it's a lot easier to clean to remove this canister, just pull it off, and you don't have to deal with that messy bag. You just clean it out the inside with a shop bag and it's a lot easier to clean. And the second thing is it has this baffle, I guess you call it, that you can rotate um, regularly and it helps to clean off the inside of the drum and keep it nice and clean and help it run efficiently uh, so it won't clog up like a bag. So those are really important for me. That's why I went with this upgraded canister model. Now they also make these double models with two motors and two bags. But ultimately, I didn't have the space. This is pretty much all the space I could give to this dust collector. So it's a trade-off between CFM and footprint as well. Now, some people will also recommend using a dust cyclone. So it's basically a trash can with a cyclone on top that separates the wood chips from the dust collector to help the filter not clog up and to basically make it easier to empty out. Personally, with this canister filter, I find it doesn't clog up and really I want to limit the footprint this thing is taking up in my shop. So that's how I'm sticking. No, no cyclone for me. Now in an ideal world, of course, I would have every tool plumbed and dust collection coming right to the tool. But I work in a small shop, 250 square feet. It's a single car garage, 23 square meters. And being in a small space means most of my tools are on wheels, everything moves around, so I don't really have any fixed locations where I use my tools. Also, I'm a hobbyist. Even though I make YouTube videos, I still only spend a few hours in the shop each week, and it just hasn't been a top priority for me. Now, probably the biggest bonus with this dust collector, and I didn't even know I needed this until I had it, is it has this dual port. So I believe it's a six inch port that splits out into two four inch ports, which is perfect for me because I can have one dedicated to the table saw and then I have another flex hose that I use for all my other tools that I just pull out to each individual tool. So this works out perfect for me. The hose is long enough to reach pretty much anywhere in my shop. So this is a really great expansion hose to have. Now keep in mind though, like I said, the further you go and if you use a flex hose like this, it'll reduce the suction on your dust collector. So make sure you have enough CFM if you're going to use one of these. And I have blast gates on here. So when I'm not using my table saw and using another tool, I'll just open this port over here. And then when I need to use my table saw, I'll just switch that around. <laughs> Obviously getting down here and actually doing this is the annoying part, but we'll talk about that in a minute. The biggest inconvenience about having my dust collector tucked into this corner is that every time I want to turn it on, I have to kind of squiggle over here and fire it up. But today I'm going to solve that issue by adding some automated blast gates and some automatic switches. So stick around for that. The last important consideration for a dust collector is electrical. Now this dust collector runs on a regular 120 volt plug. It plugs into a regular circuit, but you can also get it 220 volt if you have 220 volt in your shop. The important thing to note if you're going to plug it into a regular outlet is you need to have two different circuits. If you try to run your dust collector and your table saw at the same time, I guarantee the breaker will what are you saying? Trip. The breaker will trip. That's what I'm looking for. So I guarantee if you try to run any of your big power tools with the dust collector, it's just pulling too many amps and it will definitely trip your breaker. So you'll need to have two separate circuits, one for dust collection and one for your tools. What I do in my shop is I have one circuit that runs the dust collector and I also have my overhead air filtration running off that same circuit. So all the dust collection is there and all of my other tools run off one 15 amp circuit. Now all of the large stationary power tools in my shop run off my main dust collector. 
There are only two exceptions. The first one is my joiner because it just doesn't have a dust collection port. So it just basically spits out chips everywhere and it's a real mess. So if I ever upgrade that tool, I'll definitely consider dust collection on my list of criteria. The second tool that I don't connect to the main dust collector is my miter saw. And this tool has its own dust collection permanent setup and I'll show that to you next. All right, so underneath my miter saw station here, you'll notice I have a shop vac. I also have a dust cyclone and a bucket here. And what this does is helps to separate the wood chips from the fine dust. So most of the wood chips should end up in this bucket, which is really easy to clean out once in a while. And only the fine dust should end up in the shop vac. And what this does is it really helps to keep the filter as clean as possible, prevents it from clogging up, and just really helps the whole system run more efficiently. And I actually have a whole video on the setup of this whole system here, as well as the dust shroud on top, and I'll leave a link down below if you want to check that out. Oh, and by the way, I did upgrade my filter on this shop vac for a HEPA filter, which really helps to filter the fine dust. All right, so just a quick word on the dust shroud up here. While you saw underneath, I have a dust cyclone, which makes the shop vac a lot more efficient. Still, dust collection on a miter saw isn't always that great. So I, by adding this box up top, it really helps contain any of the airborne dust that doesn't get captured by the system underneath. Now you may have seen different people build this in different ways, like just screwing it on or adding them with magnets. I choose, chose to go with sliding doors so you can just push them open if you need to make a money cut. They won't be in the way. And then they're easy to slide back into position once you're done. The last and most recent addition to my dust collection arsenal is this dust extractor by Merca. Um, and this I got with the Merca sander, but the dust extractor is great for a lot of small tools. You can plug this into the port using my track saw, using, using my biscuit joiner. So this is pretty versatile. And if you ever wonder what the difference between a dust extractor and a shop vac is, so hi. <laughs> But seriously, obviously a dust extractor is a lot more expensive and that's because it's usually equipped with HEPA filtration and it does a really, really good job at filtering fine particles a lot more than a shop vac. And other than that, it's a lot more quiet um, and it has a lot more suction, I would say. At least from my experience, it has more suction than a shop vac. And it's really about keeping the air clean and, and filtering out those harmful particles. So yeah oh i guess the other thing is that the filter doesn't clog uh like a regular shop vac and i'm sure somebody will comment down below please let me know what the other advantages of a dust extractor are but there definitely are advantages so i guess at this point you may be thinking i'm a little crazy and over top about dust collection and you may be right but honestly to me dust collection is as important as tool safety in a workshop so while the next step for me could be piping and plumbing the shop to every single tool, that's not what I want to do. But what I do want to do is make my life easier by automating all of my blast gates and my dust collector so I don't have to go over there and turn it on every time I want to use a tool. So the next step is we're going to automate dust collection. All right, so I've got pretty much everything I need to automate my dust collection. The goal with all of this is to automate dust collection to a point where I turn on any tool in my shop, my dust collector will turn on automatically, the correct blast gate will open, and when I stop using the tool, the dust collector will turn off. Basically, I don't need to do anything once I finish this setup. So first off, I've got two blast gates for my dust collector, one for each of the ports, and these will automatically open and close as required. Over here, we have the Pro Tool Plus, and this is what's going to control each individual tool. So you'll need one of these for every tool that you want to automate in the shop. And then over here, I've got the IVAC contractor. This will control the dust collector. The pro switch controls the dust collector, allowing it to automatically turn on and off. All right, let's set it up. All right, the only thing that's missing is a surge protector. So I headed over to Princess Auto to pick up this power bar and it matches quite nicely. So the first thing I'm going to do is mount the switch next to my dust collector to the wall. And you want to make sure that the IVAC Pro here has a clear line of sight to each of the tools that you're going to be using, at least each of the plugs that you'll be using for the tools. 
All right, so next I'm going to install the contractor, which is going to control the dust collector simply by plugging this into the pro switch, plugging this one to the wall. And I'll unplug my dust collector for a second, plug this into the wall. And then the dust collector is going to connect to the contractor. There we go. And I'm just going to drop this behind there. All right, next I'm going to replace these blast gates with the automated IVAC blast gates. So I'm just going to pull the old ones out. Push the new ones in, just like that. All right, so they were kind of hitting each other if I put them like this. So I decided to put them vertically so that they don't get in the way of each other. There we go, like that. That should work. And then just connect the hoses back to them. All right, all that's left is to connect the power adapter. And then I'm going to connect both of these into my power bar. And I'm also going to connect the pro switch that we installed at the very beginning into the power bar and that's it. We'll just tuck everything back here. Now, normally for any tool you want to automate, you would just clip a Pro Tool Plus onto the plug and then plug those both into your outlet, leave it set up like that and everything is fully automated. But because I don't have a permanent setup for all my tools, I wheel them around and I plug them into different outlets, I'm not going to do that. Instead, what I'm going to do is mount the sensor here to a short extension cord and I'm going to leave it here permanently. That way, any tool I plug into this outlet will become automated on the system. I did the exact same thing for the second outlet on the left on my miter saw. That way, I have two options for plugging in my power tools. So like I mentioned before, my dust collector actually has two ports and one is dedicated exclusively to the table saw. So you can actually program these sensors to work with one or the other of the blast gates. And this one will be specific for the table saw and specific to blast gate one. So instead of plugging this one into the wall, I'm actually going to keep it on the wire for my table saw. Now you'll notice that my setup here is not ideal. I unplug my saw every time I don't use it. And when I need to use it, I plug it in over here, which is obviously a trip hazard. But for now, that's reality for me. One day I'll have a dedicated outlet on the other side. But for now, I'll just clip on this dedicated sensor for my table saw. And every time I want to use it, I'll just plug it in and then it'll be fully automated with the dust collector. All right, let's test it out. So the last thing that needs to be done before the system can run is to set every switch to auto. So I've removed the hoses temporarily just to show you the blast gates, how they work. This one's for the table saw and this one is for all of the other tools. And I've programmed them so that this one is number one and this one stays open all the time unless the blast gate two opens up, then it closes. Let me show you what I mean. So that's it. I'm so excited to have this automated. I know it's a small thing in a small shop, but at least I don't have to growl all the way over here, reach over, turn it on, run back every time. So for me, this is a huge value add in the shop. If you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment down below. I'll try to answer as many as I can and be sure to check out for the written article where I'll try to provide a few more details on my setup. Once again, be sure to check out the links below for all the tools I used in this video and more information about how to automate your shop too. Until next time, thanks for watching. See you soon. It'll scrub the air <laughs> that I paid for it.
that's not what I want to say. If you need to buy a red, this is so boring. Is the room? No. Jesus.